Throughout the history of Disney animation, we have seen time and time again films that have magical and fanciful worlds in which our timeless characters live. Environments full of challenges and obstacles for our characters to overcome. Creating compelling and magical looking effects for these worlds directly enhances the storytelling and draws our audience into the action. Effects such as wind, fire, rain, and snow. With a film such as Frozen, the story would have been impossible to tell without compelling and believable looking snow. But how do you animate all that snow? Do you animate each snowflake individually over and over again until you've created convincing looking snowfall? Because there are so many, artists now harness the strength of the computer to create snow using real world physics. Computer algorithms take away the tedious work and allow artists to focus on the creative work. This is all known as simulation. Traditionally, our artists would animate each frame of movement individually, referencing the way objects move in the real world. Because this is animation, they must exaggerate the movement using art direction, shaping the objects frame by frame to create appealing looking movement. With simulation, artists can use our newest software algorithms within the computer to recreate the physics of how snow forms together, interacts with other objects, and how it will move through the scene. We then introduce art directability, so that we may exaggerate or animate the action. After this, we can control the complexity of the shot by increasing or decreasing the number of objects in the shot. This way, we can take a single raindrop and make it into a rainstorm, or turn a snowflake into a mighty blizzard. We can continue to influence snow, or particles, and impose real-world physics on them to give us familiar or natural-looking animation. We can see snowflakes interacting with other snowflakes, clumping together and colliding off one another. Artists direct the computer to scale up the physics on a scene that will allow us to play into wind current and object collision. What happens when those snowflakes hit that castle wall? Artists must take everything into account. So how do we create a simulator that can do all these things? First, we need to identify what the core ingredients are that make up the effect. As we stated earlier, each snowflake is represented as a particle by the computer. The computer can make a particle into anything we desire. A grain of sand, a droplet of rain. It does this by assessing the proper model of physics onto that particle. So, snow, what do we know about it? What are its physical properties? This is where we create a model that can represent all the different types of snow and its specific behavior under varying circumstances. How does wet snow look and move? What about dry, powdery looking snow? This leads us to explore the wide ranges of snow that exist. Wet, chunky, crunchy, powdery, grumpy, sleepy, soupy. You name it, we have to simulate it all. This may also require scaling from one single snowball to an entire avalanche. Anything that needs to be done to make it look believable for that world. We begin to create a model guide on how each type of snow behaves. Next, we take these models and tell the particles how to behave in a scene. Remember our castle wall? Our wind? How will these affect our crunchy snow? It's all up to our solver to inform the particles on how they should move through the scene. It'll help create and control every condition, such as weather, that will influence our snow's movement. So you're probably asking yourself, how do we even know where to begin when determining how snow will act in a scene? And how do our animators bring our Disney aesthetic or art directability into play? How do we make it feel magical? This is commonly brought up and discussed during our storyboard and visual development phase. We identify how characters will move and interact in the environments we create for them whatever the story needs. For Frozen, we asked, will Kristoff and Sven be walking through deep snow? Will Olaf create snow angels? Or will he roll down the hill and form a giant snowball? <laughs> Our artists can take the solver 
and infuse art direction to the snow. This can mean choosing wet or chunky snow and shaping it a certain way so that it will hit Anna or Elsa in a funny manner. We can make it fall a certain way, clump a certain way, influencing it as best we can. If you have snow falling on Anna's head, do you want it to be shaped like a cone or a cube? We can reshape the snow to give us an infinite variety of results. Do you want it to bury her or break in half when it hits her head? Poor Anna. Maybe a large pile of snow tips over and buries her. By our directing the solver, it means we can create snow that is a blend between what is physically possible and creatively desired. We can now generate artistically naturalistic looking snow using these three things. Particles, the representation of snow, physics, our model or parameters for how the snow behaves, and our solver how the snow will move and interact in the scene. This is known as the Material Point Method Solver. Using our MPM simulator, we can also create other realistic looking particle effects. It doesn't have to be just falling snow, it can be anything malleable. Things like mud pits, even molten lava. It's fun coming up with these materials to see how they will fit in our stories. Through these groundbreaking visual effects, we can give our films more fanciful settings. The world of Frozen would not have been as magical or spellbinding otherwise. It's through the power of simulation that our artists can art direct real-world physics into a Disney-style wonderland. All thanks to Simulation!